Okay, uh, hello guys, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. And then, uh, would you turn on your camera? Okay, uh, nice to see you guys. <laughs> okay, very uh, interestingly, I have only international students this semester. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, okay, and then I'm waiting for another students to come. Just let's wait one or two minutes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, okay. Um, so, can I call you? So, okay. So, just in just following the list of the names, uh, Dutour Alexander. Yeah. Uh, how can I call your name? Uh, you you said it well. Like it's Dutour. Dutour. Okay. Uh, you said it well. Dutour. Okay. Uh, where do you came from? Uh, from France. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, excellent. <laughs> but uh, but you are in post tech, right? Is it correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm in post tech right now. Uh, uh, which department are you in? I'm in uh, CITE. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you are are you graduate or undergraduate? Uh, no, I'm undergraduate for now. Okay, good. Um, and then uh, Joe Yang Yi Xuan. Yes. Okay, nice to see you. Are nice you graduate or graduate? Um, I I'm an exchange student and uh -huh. I'm graduate. I don't know. Yes. Oh, uh, where do you came from? Uh, which university are you, you came from? Um, I'm from Insa Ren. Uh, it's in France, and um, I don't know if you know that. I come from the same school. I don't think so. Uh, okay. No. Uh, I'm coming from UTT, uh, another school. Okay, great. Um, and then, oh, Ali, Ali, can you hear me? Can you turn on your mic? Yes. Good. Can you, can you hear me? Your... <laughs> yeah. Can you introduce myself, yeah? <laughs> yeah, would you? <laughs> okay, okay. As you know, actually, I'm actually Ali Abdi, and uh, I'm a master's student here. My field is mechanical engineering, and my research interests are robotic and artificial artificial intelligence. Yeah. Uh, 
Like, can you turn on your camera? <laughs> yes. What? No, oh, okay. okay. Can you see him? Sorry. Can you see me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All uh, right. Um, actually, there there will be. I'm not so sure that uh, she has a uh, actually a class time conflict. And she has actually she came from uh, UK. Yeah. And so uh, well, I don't know uh, whether she can solve it or not. But um, okay. So uh, and then uh, 욱진 선생의 카메라 켜고 간단하게 설명해 줄수 있어요. <laughs> 그냥 간단하게 헬로만 해도 돼요. 얼굴만 일단 보여주시고. <웃음> okay, so uh, I'm introducing I'm introducing Mr. Sin, uh, who is the um, uh, TA here. <웃음> 아, 카메라가 바뀌었어요. 네, 네, 오케이. Right. Um, so you guys are here, right? Uh, all you guys are here. Yes. Okay. So, so. This class is actually about uh, AR and VR and uh, augmented reality and more about actually, it's about uh, extended reality uh, using uh, actually either you, so you can use, um, what is that? Uh, okay, so I'm just kind of showing some machines that we are using. Uh, so let's see. Uh, can uh, uh, how can I show that? So, who is Joga Boy? Say, how many boys here? Okay, okay. So, this one is actually Oculus Quest. Uh, we have two sets of this. So this one is basically for VR. And then this one is actually HoloLens to the one of the newly developed one. And we have also two headsets. Actually, we have three headsets of this. And this one is actually known as Magic Leap. Uh, this one, uh, so after HoloLens 1 discontinued and before HoloLens 2 is arrived, there was kind of one and a half year of uh, disconnected time from Microsoft. At that time, actually, this one is known as Magic Leap. Uh, this one is one a startup company made it. So we have three kind, different kinds of headsets. And I will show you later about, actually this one I will show you later, but this one is kind of like mixed reality that 3D printed, uh, this is basically post tech campus. And then I will actually project some information on top of it. So by doing so, uh, we can actually merge between a kind of information on top of, um, on top of uh, a kind of, so this is kind of known as kind of a, how can I say, mixed reality thing. And this one is actually makerspace. And then, uh, have you guys been here before? No. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I just did it. Oh, so do two, did you take any certificate to use 3D printer or other machines? No, 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 no. I just uh, went this to the class. Uh, okay. So uh, this is basically our classroom, basically. So what we are going to do is that we are going to build a kind of mixed reality a thing. So we have a lot of tools here. And then if I just walk through a little bit more, we have another room on the other side of it. So this is basically a change of ground. Uh, so the tour you have been here, but um, Joel, you never been here before. No. So I strongly recommend for you to <laughs> visit here. This is kind of lobby area. Okay. So probably you will enjoy to stay here. Uh, this is some, uh, coffee, uh, I don't know, some eating area and some meeting room. And actually, um, so uh, this, the, this one is known as a media war. And then actually this one was last semester's project area. So uh, literally um, uh, previous students built an aquarium in this middle area before. And then this is another makerspace. Uh, we have 
quite several robot arms. And then actually there is the, the, ro the, the robot arm in the, in the back that is actually a copy making machine. And then here's another maker space. So that's kind of, that's where we are going to build our uh, mixed reality project here. Uh, so I'm going back to my desk and continue to explain a little bit more. Okay. Me. So probably about one month is later, once the, uh, once the university policy may open to classroom, so you can come here and then you can take, we can actually learn here together. Okay, I'm going back to presentation. Okay, uh, so now can you see the screen? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, so uh, about two, three years ago, I don't know, can you hear me? So this one is description about known as Idea City. This is basically explaining, can you hear it? Uh, let no. me see. Uh, I will check some sound. Uh, okay, I will uh, re-explain a little bit later, but this one is some video explaining, just talking about um, digital twin city uh, of an actual city. So what it means is that this one just described, and then we named it, so this one is the concept that our uh, postdoc professors developed and called it Idea City. Uh, so kind of like Idea City is a kind of a copy, a digital copy of physical one. And here that if we have a copy of physical city and it, this one is actually digital one, the main concept is that this one is a kind of metaverse place where that citizens can discuss about some new ideas about city. And then they can actually uh, discuss about a new design of a city. And even participants can change and apply their ideas into a in some kind of new ideas into virtual city. And then after that, we can apply those ideas into physical city. And then kind of like this one describes actually our concept that uh, so kind of like we at that time, so we kind of, uh, we initiated a pro POSTEC project that developing a digital twin version of POSTEC. That's why the 3D printed version of the 3D printed, our campus is actually where it came from. And then you probably see that POSTEC is developing Metaverse City, which is Metaverse based university, which is simply, cha we changed the term. However, the idea is actually came from Three years ago, uh, this idea city concept. So um, after that, okay. So the project that I actually have worked on is actually this one is the kind of brain drain issue of Switzerland, and you probably already know that Switzerland has. Uh, so-called brain drain issue, uh, meaning that there are 57% of professors and postdocs are actually foreigners. And then many Switzerland nationality researchers actually go to, main, many of them actually went to United States. So actually Swiss, Switzerland uh, take very seriously about this issue. So what they did about uh, I think it is roughly, this one is roughly 2001. So roughly about 22 years ago. 
So this is actually known as a Swiss next. This one is actually one house in Cambridge next to Harvard University. So this one is actually one of my professor's project at the time. So uh, he is actually a Swiss architect. Uh, at the time he was teaching at Harvard University. And what he did at the time was he built a house. However, the house has a lot of uh, words. So actually uh, called it media wars. And then actually the media war has a display. At the time it was just projection screen and there's a camera and sitting room inside of it. And the other side of it, for example, this another area, can you see my mouse? No. So yeah. some, uh, yeah, yeah, we can. Okay, you can, some white area that outside of it is actually another room in another countries. So the, the, the boundaries of this house is actually a kind of physical boundary, but also this one is a kind of connected world to another office in another country. So what they want to achieve is that, so any, any Swiss people, any Swiss researcher can visit this place anytime and then they can collaborate with any person in another office, this one is kind of like uh, kind of virtually connected using camera and screen, and they can collaborate uh, some Swiss, uh, Swiss researcher in another country, in another office anytime. So they called this project known as Swiss Next. This is 22 years ago. That, so that was the concept. So this one is kind of one of the earliest concept of how to connect between physical space and virtual space and connect people in two different continents. So I was actually working in this project a long time ago. And then you probably know this advertisement, which is known as probably Europe next door. What it is, is actually there's a camera. And then if you just open this door, there is a, a LED display panel. And then I think this one is in Paris and connected to Brussels, Stuttgart, and other European area. And it has a camera. I think the little black one is a camera. And this person is in Paris. So once you open the door and then the two people in different countries can see each other and then they can be connected. So this one is a kind of mixed reality project that, um, a lot of different places can connect it together and share experiences together. So, um, that's kind of like an interesting project. And that's something um, I think that the kind of ultimate version of mixed reality, simply combining not just virtual world or physical world. This one is actually virtual and physically connect another uh, places each other. And then, so this one is actually our old version. So probably you probably can see that I'm showing that uh, this is the actually the our Mac area that I probably show you. And then in this presentation, we developed a digital twin of makerspace. So in this place, the left side video. He is one of our uh, researcher wearing uh, Oculus headset. And actually he cannot see outside at all. He only move around based on the virtual world that you probably see from the right side. But since it is a digital twin, the scale and object, they are all identical to each other. So even he's wearing Oculus headset and he cannot see any real object his movement inside of this area doesn't have any problem. Basically, he is working, basically he is moving around and watching around the virtual world. However, that is exactly identical to the physical world. So left side is that he's moving around. A right side is actually showing the virtual world that he's actually what he sees inside of it and move around based on uh, this virtual world. 
And another interesting thing is that, so in this virtual world, this is identical to physical one. Uh, you probably see the same monitor here. And also you probably see the same monitor in the virtual world too. And then if you click uh, this monitor, so actually on some, actually you are in post it, right? So actually yes. we really need to work on this way. So next week, uh, next week from next week, actually it is okay for you to come here and then we will continue our class in here. And interestingly, what we are going to do is I probably teach in the other space, which is RoboShop and you guys will stay here. So probably uh, interestingly, we are doing remotely following the university policy. We will teach you remotely. However, we will in, be in the different places. So now, so again, so from next Monday, please come to this makerspace. We are in the third floor in the change of ground. And then probably we can actually uh, jump into learning. So, and then he actually wants to come here. Actually, anybody uh, who wants to learn 3D printing or laser cutter, whoever wants to come here, will learn here uh, using, uh, actually the, the, the TA guy will teach you individually. However, if you, in this world, actually we uh, take a record of teaching using a VR camera, uh, the right side is actually showing the camera version of a headset, just to compare that. And then if you actually click one of the screens of here, and then if you click this screen, this will initiate, you, this one brings you into 3060 VR glass video so it feels like you are in actual space and that you will be taught individually so this one we called it almost hyperspace because you are actually in the virtual world and virtual world is connected to vr video recorded tutorial so this one gives you a feeling of you are here and you are kind of individually uh, uh, taught by someone else so this one is actually another level of virtuality. Uh, this one you can see, I will show you the link very quickly, uh, but uh, this will be more fun. So next to Monday, I will show you, I will demonstrate you to uh, see this uh, headset and then this kind of like tutorial. Uh, I'm guaranteed that it will be really fun. Okay. So after kind of finishing this tutorial, once you click the monitor one more time, you are coming back to the virtual world and then actually you move around again. And actually, so I kind of, so we will discuss about what is the possibility of this virtual world and combining it with the physical world and also a combination, converging them into another kind of VR 360 degree or another level. So that's something we are going to discuss from the next week. And one of the projects that one of my students did last semester was actually inspired by this Love Death Robot movie. Anyone, have you seen this one? Uh, no. Uh, so this one, uh, do you know, the, this one is a, uh, one of the Netflix uh, series. The kind of the overall title is Love Death Robot and Aficionite is actually one episode in that series. And this episode is actually very interesting that two guys driving uh, in a desert in United States. And that was, and then the whole uh, story is that that area was long time ago, long time ago is under the sea. And then all the disappeared fishes or underwater animals are actually revivate at night. And that's the kind of like a story about this episode. And one interesting thing moment is that one of the driver kind of deeply engaged to this um, kind of fantasy like fish kind of animal and start to interact with it. 
And suddenly this guy is actually interact with these fishes as you see now here. And then actually, um, I don't want to uh, corrupt your experience with this one. So I strongly recommend if you can see this one, if you can, and actually the behind story, I would not tell you. Okay, and then we were uh, motivated by this one. So we decided to create uh, this kind of interactive aquarium, aquarium in the, the kind of the media world that I showed you before. So this one was our, the student's proposal last semester. And then the proposal was, what if we create a kind of a aquarium fish tank in the, uh, this media world, and then that is kind of interact with people. So this one was the project that uh, demonstrating uh, last, last winter, uh, so actually the TA that who's sitting here is actually testing this actual magic lip. And actually he's trying to attempt to interact with the fishes, virtual fishes. And the right view is showing that what the scene that he actually see. And this one is actually interactive fish that move around him. So there are big fish, small fish, and a lot of different fishes move around and flocking around uh, around him. And then if he actually raise his hand or finger, uh, there are some small flock of fish that interact with his actually finger. Uh, it'll be shown very quickly. So he actually raised his hand and as a little, this little flock of fishes are actually move around his finger. So this one is basically computer vision algorithm that uh, so you can actually use a camera uh, uh, embedded in the headset and it will actually detect your finger and then actually detect the location of the, your finger in a space. And then actually you can make all those fishes move around that position. So this is another one uh, my students did last one. So uh, this one is actually kind of, um, just background that like just the basic idea is Metaverse will be major contact very soon and a lot of investment is going on. And what's going on is just kind of background. And, and then the, the thing is uh, when you learn something from this headset, the learning performance is about, is about 2.7 times higher than when someone learned without headset. So something kind of blah, blah, blah. And then when we actually researched about what is this kind of AR, VR based educations are tested and many of them are actually uh, in anatomy class in medical university, uh, in surgery training or pre-surgical training, there, those are the main areas of using this AR headset in education. And also children's uh, clinical research and also another one is actually nuclear power plant training. So there are a lot of, uh, uh, there are not many. Uh, the un something unfortunate thing is that there are not many uh, research so far, meaning which is good, very good one because uh, we, what we are doing will be very easily something new. Uh, that's kind of good side of it. And some, so we, I have researched how other universities are teaching this AR, VR technologies. So Cornell is teaching this one and Lund Sweden is teaching this one. And SCMU Singapore is teaching one, but I couldn't really find that much educational resources around the world. So this is actually our basic plan. So week one is roughly uh, just, just something introductory classes. For the first three weeks, we are going to learn Unity 3D and Rhino 3D, which is basically to create a 3D content that move around in the 3D space. And then to actually really work on a computer vision or interfaces, you need to learn C sharp programming. Uh, have you guys have some programming background? Yes. So, what did you? Uh, what are the most comfortable programming languages, Joe? Um. So, uh, actually, I've programmed a lot using C sharp because oh. I have. Uh, I have. Uh, experiences with Unity 3D. So yes, oh, that's, that's very comfortable for me. Okay. And how about the tour? 
Uh, yeah, I have programmed a lot, but uh, mostly in uh, Python and JavaScript. Uh, okay. I did a little of C sharp and C plus plus, but uh, not uh, not not really this far. So but don't worry, I'll catch up. I will catch up. Uh, okay. Uh, Ali is very good at programming, but <laughs> would you explain some your other programming experiences? Yeah, uh, Python, MATLAB, and a little C plus plus, and yeah. Okay. So I will then. Okay. So good news. Okay. Um. So for this project, I initiated a collaboration with Meta, uh, previously Facebook. And also I initiated a collaboration with Unity 3D, the Korean branch of it. And then if you guys are interested, uh, there will be a meeting with Facebook this Wednesday. <laughs> and unfortunately, exactly at our class time, so that's why I have to cancel this Wednesday's class. However, if you want to join the meeting, you are welcome to join. <laughs> so the meeting will be at 3.30 at the robot shop that I just showed you. Uh, that at that time, the, um, some, uh, the, uh, just, I mean, basically it's one person who actually, he is the main key contact person of the Facebook Korean branch. So uh, you're welcome to join the meeting. Basically, I just introduced what I just introduced to you, the makerspace. And then what uh, I collaborated with uh, Facebook is that uh, I told them POSEC is making meta makerspace. And this meta makerspace, be basically what I showed you, which is actually this one. So, So this one is actually our prototype of our small makerspace. And what Meta and we are trying to collaborate is we want to build the whole third floor makerspace as a Meta makerspace. And once we build a Meta makerspace, another universities in remotely, in remote locations, they can teach making without really installing this kind of maker tools because they can use meta makerspace. And what we are trying to do is, if a person can learn making tools in a meta makerspace, and then that person can operate on machines in a virtual world. And what we are trying to do is connect that virtual machine with physical machine. Imagine that you are in a meta makerspace with headsets on, and then you kind of operate 3D printers in a makerspace, then we want to connect those virtual machine with physical machine, then actual physical 3D printer will operate it by your operation in a virtual space. And then actually the finished 3D printed object can be delivered to him or her using just, uh, just post office. And then uh, what we are thinking is this meta makerspace can be nationally used because anyone in Korea can operate and learn 3D or 3D printers and laser cutters or any maker machines in virtual world and can be trained and they can actually use this machine in their home. So Postec and I are actually developing a, this kind of a virtual meta maker space that can be used at the first stage is nationally. At the second stage is actually I came from MIT Media Lab and I have a lot of my co uh, colleagues and classmates who has actually their own makerspace in Egypt and United States. And actually we can build a meta makerspace that can work collaboratively work in global scale. So this is something I like to do. However, in this project, I don't know your um, background or I don't know your personal interest so your assignment is just doing one project. It can be either VR, if you're interested. It can be also AR. Also, it can be mixed reality. So uh, you pick whether you want to use VR headset or AR headset or mixed reality version of it. And you just kind of have just work on one project 
that satisfy your personal interest. That's the kind of requirement here. Uh, so pretty much that it is about this class. Oh, and then um, also I mentioned that I work with Unity 3D and that we have, uh, we just made an MOU that Unity 3D will offer you Unity Pro version and then you will you will receive any technical support only pro license uh, users. So you'll have a lot of uh, very significant support from Unity 3D uh, very soon because uh, we are actually stabilizing our um, collaboration. Yes, yeah? so it is actually uh, confirmed yet. What has been confirmed is actually allow my students to use Unity 3D Pro version. But, uh, but actually they also agreed to uh, support uh, any technical, diff technical problems for you, breaching some engineers from Unity 3D. And then next week, I will restart from some, a couple of reading to extend your imagination. <laughs> and after, so that's the, our first week. And then later then we are going to learn some Unity interactivity and also, I will teach you how to use uh, Rhino 3D, which is a kind of a very effective and very useful 3D modeling tool. And then I will teach you about a little bit about a realistic rendering, so you can build a realistic virtual world in, in AR VR headset. Uh, we are going to also learn some physics engines at the time. And then after that, I probably uh, guide you a little, little bit about c -sharp programming and object-oriented programming and design pattern. So you can actually, this one is just help you to more easily use uh, Unity libraries. And then also, if possible, I want you to actually use some computer vision uh, feature in uh, uh, Quest and uh, Holorens too. And then the next three weeks, you are going to develop your own project for four works week by week, very slowly. And then we will have some uh, small uh, review at the end of it. And one of the things that I am collaborating uh, with the change of ground, I don't know whether you are familiar with the building. Change of ground is not really post text building. This one is actually post course building in post-tech campus. And there is actually another building in Seoul. So what I suggest to POSCO is that let's make a convergence space between Pohang change of ground and Seoul change of ground building that my advisor built 22 years ago at Harvard, Cambridge, and Switzerland. So these are something I am working on with POSCO this semester too. So if you are interested, you can work on this one too. However, uh, definitely it is up to you that what you like to do. Uh, that is just pretty much about the overall outline of this semester's uh, AR VR classes. So now, um, uh, would you going back to you? <laughs> Would you explain what you are interested in? And you can change later anytime while we are learning the basic four weeks of Unity 3D, 3D modeling and C-Shop. You can develop your ideas further during that time for two months. But uh, for now, would you a little bit, would you explain me about a little bit about your background and what are you interested in or what do you want to make? And then probably if you are a graduate student, you probably, you may have a project that you have to work on, probably. But if you're undergraduate, uh, it's really up to you. <laughs> du tour, uh, du tour? Is uh, it? Uh, it's called du tour, but it's okay, don't worry. Uh, du tour, okay. So maybe from the back, so yeah, just kind of shortly, uh, Ali, do you have a second thought about what you want to do or? <laughs> Actually, I 
actually, uh, yeah, uh, I want to actually uh, mix uh, some augmented reality to uh, experimental setup uh, in order to actually decrease the actually um, expenses of the experimental setup. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's good. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, so? Should I call you Yang Yishuan or Joe? Is uh, you can call me like uh, Yang Yishuan, or you can simply call me Yishuan too, Yi if you want. Okay, Yishuan. What do you want? <laughs> um. So how um, I'm not very sure about it because uh, actually I'm just interested about. Um, 3D world or VR AR, but I have never tried develop uh, AR before. So I think if I had the chance, maybe I can try some AR. Uh -huh. Okay, that's good. Uh, how about the two? The two? Uh, yeah, for me, it's also the first time I never tried this too, but uh, I'm kind of interested in it uh, about, uh, for example, video games. I once played the VR video games and I really enjoyed it. And I think it's like the future of it. So yeah, I just want to see if, uh, if I enjoy it and uh, just uh, make the first step in it. Yeah, that's perfect. Actually, um, uh, I have another undergraduate uh, senior, I, th I think so former student last, last year. Uh, he actually uh, developed a ping pong in a virtual in an AR headset. And then so he uh, actually, he assumed that there's two guy, one guy here and another guy in another country. And imagine that they can play ping pong together and there's a war in the middle. And then the kind of like a, a virtual ball move around in one space. And then if he hit it, it goes to the another country's user and then he hit it. So kind of like this ball is actually moving continent but they feel like they are in one space and they play together. So you definitely game is a very good uh, project. Uh, and then I want to actually introduce this project to, uh, give me one second. Uh, uh, this is one of my uh, favorite project. Can you see that? Uh, we can. This one is mixed reality project. A canvas is attached to two robot arms and canvas is moving around. So anything you see, anything animated here is actually a kind of mixed reality thing. And then we also have a robot arms too. So definitely you're welcome to this kind of mixed reality art. This one is also known as projection mapping. So that one is the actual setup. So uh, that, that the project is actually uh, widely open. Uh, however, I want you to think about this week is that what is really the potential of using a kind of like a augmented reality or virtual reality? And actually I want you to catch that. What does that mean by using the new technology. So I kind of, I hope you to, but that one is not really theory-based or that one is not really research-based. Rather, I, I think that it is really depend on your imagination. So you can watch any sci-fi movie 
or any Hollywood movie that represent a kind of virtual world or real world. And then I kind of offer you to think about what kind of project really open or really another level of possibility of using this kind of technology. That, that's, that's the main thing. So next week, uh, kind of like, uh, let's discuss about together that why do we really need this kind of virtual reality or augmented reality technology? Um, I don't know, uh, do you know the movie? Uh, so actually, I, I want you to pick on a couple of movies that, that represent kind of the essence of this kind of technology. Do you know Ready Play One movie? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, Ready Play One. So Ready Play One is another interesting, this kind of distal twin movie. And then, so it, it, this is very interesting. So this one explains about the future, which is 2045. So many of the people live in container in a lousy place. However, in the container, it is, the reality is really bad. However, the, the extra space they move around is actually, is really amazing and really nice. And that was my first experience was just like this. So what happened is, so once you, once you hear uh, next Monday, I will give you just uh, some VR headset. And in that headset, you can change the, uh, it, it is called just kind of environment. And basically you can design your own virtual environment within the headset. And you can change in a way that you want. So actually I place a waterfall, I change a lot of sky and I add a lot of water. And the kind of 10 minutes of experiencing those kind of nature was really great. And after you take off the headset, now you come back to the reality and then you'll be disappointed that your reality is not as good as your virtual world. I, to be honest, I was really disappointed by the reality, reality that I live in. Then I kind of seriously think about that. If I can live, so let's imagine that we live 16 hours in the real world and we sleep eight hours sleeping on a bed. And then if you can spend 16 hours in a virtual world where all the people you are going to meet are beautiful and nice and friendly and all the places in a virtual world is just extremely nice and beautiful, have amazing view, then should I really come back to this real world? Why do I have to come back to this lousy real world when I can live in a something nice world? So kind of like think about it, um, what this will change the future of our lives and what this will change our future of living. So I recommend that grab, uh, and then another one is actually the one of the recent one is, uh, there are a lot of, uh, so I'll give you some movie list that I hope you to watch it them. So it's just a trailer or summary version of the movie and think about what could be our future with these technologies. This is actually something that we want to discuss next week. So you don't really need to prepare anything for more. You don't need to write anything, but just think about it, that what could be our future? And then just feel free so to discuss about it. That's, that it will be our next week's job. Okay, so again, uh, and then do you have any questions about this course this semester? Uh, yeah, actually, I've got just one. Yep about the software uh, do we have to download them and uh, use our personal computer or not oh do you have to download for example like unity 3d uh, and so on oh yes yeah yes actually yes if you possible just would you download a unity student version and then uh, i will contact unity 3d that whether they can offer unity pro license uh, I'm not so sure that is this really they can 
uh, prefer for you or not. However, they are very positive. So, but for now, you can just download Unity 3D and would you install it? Okay, okay, no problem. So, so next Monday we are we bring our computer at the lab. So. Oh, ah, ne next Monday. Uh, next Monday, I will actually a little bit uh, introduce about 3D model making using Rhino 3D. So I will give you a license. So if you have time, please would you uh, download, uh, you, actually it is Rhino 3D version six, which is not the latest. However, uh, would you just download it and then we can use them together. And I will email you soon the license link for you. Thanks. Okay, all right. And then, um, and then for this one, so we will meet next Monday afternoon in Makerspace third floor. Uh, not, uh, we are not going to work on Zoom. Uh, do, is there anyone that who prefer rather Zoom than a physical classroom? No. No, physical is good for me. Okay, yeah. So, oh, so, but we are still have to follow the university policy. So I'll be stay in the other room. <laughs> okay, all right. So that's it. And then how about uh, this Wednesday? So anyone love to join the meeting with Facebook? Me. It's up to you. Um, so what's the subject of this meeting? I'm wondering. Uh, so this this is actually our first meeting to discuss about the future collaboration between Facebook and Postec. Okay. Uh, and then actually, basically, they are highly interested in our makerspace. And then Facebook is extremely interested in developing a kind of educational uh, meta maker pla meta educational platform. So that's what Postec is trying to collaborate with, uh, with them. But basically, this one is just. But uh, he is actually a Korean guy, so probably anything just will be discussed in Korean. So. Yeah. So. <laughs> it'll be a little difficult, I think. Yes, it's a little bit difficult. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Then. Uh, okay. Then. Um, Okay, so I just kind of little survey. Uh, so, so the tool. Uh, what did you do? You have some Unity experience, right? Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. That's why so, the tool. How about three D model making? None. <laughs> Almost none. To be honest. <laughs> okay. uh, how about programming? Uh, how do you think? Uh, are you do you think are you a beginner, or I don't know some average? No, no, no I did like a lot of projects, uh, just uh, never about three D and and so so. But uh, about uh, my programming skills, I'm pretty confident I could catch up. I think. Oh, are you familiar with object oriented programming? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, all right, so. You are comfortable with uh, importing and define a class as variable, and then you can just feel for it. Are you comfortable using those kind of importing library? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. okay. okay all right, well, that's good enough. Okay, and then actually, uh, Ishan. Yes. You have experience in Unity three D. What did you do with it before? Um. So I have developed a. Video a short video game demo, and uh -huh. I've also um uh I I I have done uh an internships, so uh -huh. I have developed uh like uh support the development of uh XR Holo board. Oh, okay. Um, so it's about uh like uh XR, and in school I have also developed a baseball game. A uh, uh -huh. VR baseball game using a uh, Steam. Uh, what is that? Oh, HTC Vive Pro. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, so that's all I think. And uh, for three D modeling, I'm not very familiar, but I'm trying to learn Maya. So mm -hmm. I have uh, some okay, experience. Okay, that's good. About Actually, Maya is the one, one of the. Uh, um, sorry. Excellent experience. <laughs> 
Oh, uh, so, but I think like uh, for modeling, I think I don't have much, many te techniques to model. So uh -huh. it's a little bit difficult for me to like model some uh, complex uh, models, but I'm trying to learn how to do animations and modeling and, and so on. Yes, that's my project. Yeah. Okay, I see. And then Ellie, um, I know about Ellie, but let others know about your 3D and programming background. <laughs> so yeah. Unity, you never worked? No. Okay, that's good. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, that's pretty much that's it for today. And then again, we are going to be next Monday this time here. Uh, and then I will give you a couple of list of movies that I hope you to I hope you enjoy, and then uh, think about uh, again. So instead of focusing on technical details, I I would like to focus on is we I want to catch that the new possibility of using this AR VR that nobody sees it before or what could be another interpretation of this technology is actually the key. So uh, I hope you to uh, utilize or take advantage of your previous experience, which is actually international experience that when you move around or in Korea, when you are remotely located, when you separated from your families, friends or professors, and what is that you, what is, the kind of like a, uh, a new interactions between you and your friends or you and the space or you with the technology that you think is necessary. Uh, that is kind of like a, that's kind of that. I, I hope you to think about, that's it. All right, so, uh, so think, I hope you to really think really radically and really bold way, do something. So I help you to tell me some of your crazy, crazy ideas. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, all right, that's it for today. All right, so I hope you to, I hope you to uh, enjoy the kind of the introduction of this class. All right, okay. So any final comment or are you ready to go back to your uh, kind of dull, gloomy, real, real world. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, okay, then next week. So that's it for today. And let's continue next Monday. Okay. See okay. Bye. See you. Right. Okay, see you. See you. Okay, bye.